so to continue on our segment of bits, so we, you know, I mean, it's a blog. It's a blog. We roll with it. I get these ideas and we roll with it. So I was going to do a little section on Hunter versus Jumper, but instead we're going to focus on bridles and bits. It's a good thing for us to focus on today. Um, and proper putting the bridle on and taking it off in my pearls of wisdom to that and having a horse that wants to take the bit. But this is my new tack room. I love it, love it, love it. Um, my stuff is here. Um, I just wanted to point out some of the bridles and some of the bits. This will be really helpful to you guys. Um, it, on a, if you can pan down on the bits, you're gonna see everything I have is a snaffle. Everything I have is so just the bit part if you want. Everything I have is a very simple snaffle a very comfortable snaffle bits that feel really really comfortable in the horse's mouth okay and so i know i i, I want to talk a little about this guys i know in the hunter tack rooms and the jumper tack rooms you're going to have much harder bits and some of them are twists and some of them you know are pelhams or kimberwicks or bridles that give you a lot more power and strength um, and I know for the jumping horses, sometimes that's necessary because your seat's out of the saddle. And so if you need, so you might need more strength for your bit because your seat's out of the saddle. So you can't really slow the horse down with your seat so much. Um, are we still okay? Okay, good. Um, I know a lot of the western people use harsher bits i know a lot of them will use twists they'll use double wires they'll use all sorts of stronger trying to pick and choose my adjectives so i'm politically correct they use stronger bits i get that i get that so in the hunter jumper world i get that in the western world i get that i would really 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 like it if the western trainers only used bits like this that would make me so happy if we could eliminate any of the twists and any of the tougher bits that would make me really happy um also the shanked bits i don't have any as you can see i don't have any shanked bits now if you're a dressage person, by the time you get to the FBI levels to Bruce St. George, you have to be in a double bridle. I get that. And when we take a break, I'll go get my double bridle. And so um, why don't we take a break now and I'll go get my double bridle. Okay, so let's talk about dressage bits, all right? So dressage bits, as best as you can, try to stay with the German training snaffles. This is a German training snaffle with a loose ring, meaning the ring slips, all right? This is standard dressage equipment. They're wonderful. When they created this, we called it a walnut. In the middle, it's really fantastic because you can see how it sits on the horse's palate. It sits on the horse's palate and tongue really, really nicely. It's very, very comfortable. This is our most standard, wonderful dressage bit. All right, so let's roll back a little. When I'm teaching a horse how to steer, say I'm doing my first 30, 60, 90 days, I put them in either this, where's my jointed one? It's hidden, I'll get it. Or this, all right, I'll hold it up. Here's my other one, fabulous. Okay, so when I'm teaching, so dressage 101, this is probably the bit you're gonna wanna end up using until you go to a double bridle, which happens as you're approaching pre-St. George. Most people never get there, okay? That's the FEI levels, that's the international levels. Um, German training snaffle. When, here's another one. See this one? Here's another standard German training snaffle uh, with a loose ring, here's another one. Standard German, German training snaffle with a loose ring. Love it. Um, when I'm training the youngsters, I like to put them in a happy mouth. Uh, happy mouth is a whole line of bits that came out, I don't know, I'm old, 20 years ago. And we love them, and all of us love them so much that Happy Mouth as a company made pretty much every damn bit you can 
imagine in a happy mouth they look like this so um we definitely support happy mouths we love them and you can get pretty much any bit in a happy mouth we love them so when i'm starting a youngster and i really want them to like their the bit um the happy mouth tastes good they feel good i do start the horses in happy mouths and i love that full cheeks here's another um i love the full cheeks when you're teaching a horse how to steer they're really fantastic because they influence the whole side of the horse's mouth rather than just the mouth. And when you're teaching a horse how to steer, sometimes they don't quite get it. And if you use a bit like this, the ring ends up getting pulled through and into their mouths. Full cheek, it won't happen. When you start off a youngster, my very favorite bit is this one. So what they've done is they incorporated the full cheek with the happy mouth with the link in the middle. It doesn't get better than this. When you're starting a youngster, in my opinion, not only a youngster, when you're starting a horse, in my opinion, this is the best starting bit. They love them, okay? Then if you want, if you need a little more, you can go to this full cheek. So this full cheek, as you can see, doesn't have the link in the middle. This is what I call an old fashioned full cheek. It just has the single. So you can see the difference with how it hangs in their palette. See how much softer this one is? This link allows it to sit on their tongue, whereas this one pokes against the tongue. See, this gives you a lot more control, all right? A lot more leverage because when you pull back, it points down on their tongue, whereas this one is the softest and the most lovely, all right? So you can go from this to this. If you want, a lot of horses are really happy working in this. This is what I had on the pony twirl, except for it was like this. Regular full cheek without the happy mouth part. Okay, so twirl you saw, here it is. Here's twirl, it's hunter bridle. And you see he's just wearing a normal old, old fashioned, I call them old fashioned, full cheek with a single joint in the middle. I love them, they're wonderful. They don't have to be fat. The width, the diameter, the width is perfectly fine. All right. So we've got your first starting off baby horse bit. Then, oops, then we can evolve if you want to this bit, perfectly fine. And then if you want, you can evolve to this bit, perfectly fine. And then if you're gonna stay in the hunter world or the jumper world, you can stay with this forever. Or you can go type B of the hunters, which is a D ring. I don't have any because I don't like the look of them. I don't have any Ds. I don't like the look of them. I much prefer a full cheek look. All right, if you're going to evolve into having a dressage type of horse, you'll probably want to go to a German training snaffle. All right, so while we're talking about the dressage, if you are fortunate enough to be able to work up through all the levels, so pre-training level, training first, second, third, fourth, look at about a year for each level, look at the fact that there's all sorts of things that will prevent you and your horse from going up the next level, the next level. But if you're able to keep going up the levels, you're gonna get into the FEI levels, the pre-St. George levels, you have to wear a double bridle. It's tradition, you have to wear a double bridle. So once you get into the FEI levels, you have to wear a double bridle, and I just went and grabbed mine. So here's my double bridle, all right? Now, um, this needs to be over there. Okay, so it's dusty <laughs> because I don't have any horses that I'm riding a double bridle in. Um, you can ride an FEI horse if you can ride them in a simple snaffle all the way up through and do your pee off and your passage and your canter pirouettes and your one tempies and the whole dang thing in a snaffle. Rock on more power to you, right? But if you're going to compete, you got to be in a double. So this is our standard double, guys. This is a dressage bridle. It's a double bridle. Both bits go in the horse's mouth. Very bizarre, I know, but it's true. All right, so this is called a bradoon. It's a snaffle, but you call it a bradoon because the ring is smaller, because you have all this equipment, you know what I mean? So the ring on a bradoon is smaller than the ring on a regular loose ring snaffle doesn't have to be a loose ring, but I think this is the most traditional and I like it the most. This is called a Bradoon. Now, if you have a pony or a smaller horse, you can use the Bradoon 
as their snaffle. And it looks really nice because the rings are smaller, all right? And then this is the curved part. So they call this a Wymouth, if you want the fancy name for it, or you can call it a curb. All right, this section is going to take a few minutes, so if you're not a dressage person, fast forward. <laughs> But if you are a dressage person, this is going to take a moment because I want to talk about the curbs or the Wymouth. So you use a regular Cavasin with the double bridle. All right, just a regular nose band. All right, and this is called the Wymouth and it has a chain. Okay, so this is the quote unquote severe part of the double bridle. Anytime you have a shank, it's much more influential and much more severe. That's why none of my bits have our shanked bits. Um, you have to, you have to ride in a double. So what I do is I choose the Wymouth, the curb that is the least severe. All right. Let me tell you how you know. This is called the port. You want as low a port as possible. The higher the port, the more severe. There you go. How easy is that? So in the Western bridles or in the double bridles, the ports sometimes go way up to year. They're just monsters. The higher the port, the more severe. Stick with the low port if you can. The longer the shank, the more severe. Stick with the shortest shank you can find. Those are hard and fast rules across the board. Western people, pay attention. A lot of the Western riders do ride in shanked bits. A lot of the, um, the Western disciplines require a shanked bit to compete. You gotta have it. A lot of Western riders feel like uh, you can't really ride a horse one-handed properly unless you're riding them in what I call a full bridle, a shanked bit. I try not to. The shorter the shank, the less severe. The longer the shank, the more severe. There you go, you have it. Um, across the board, the lower the port, the less severe, the shorter the shank, the less severe, and it does have a curb chain, and it's just part of riding with a uh, curb bit. So when you, I'm not going to put the double on anybody because none of my horses right now are wearing doubles, but it's a standard dressage bridle, and the double bit, meaning the Bradoon with the Wymouth and double reins, so you're riding with uh, four reins, two reins on each side. I'm not gonna show you how to carry them. It's not important right now. It's not important for my training program, so I'm not gonna talk about that. If we end up with an upper level horse that's in a double, I'll talk about holding four reins, all right? So there you go, there's your double bridle. So this is for the most advanced of the dressage horses, and if you can go all the way up and through Grand Prix, with a German training snaffle or with a regular snaffle bit. If you have to compete, use the least severe bit that you possibly can. And, oh, just another tip about the doubles. If you want, you can just ride on the snaffle. So what I do when I'm riding on a double is I connect the horse on the snaffle and then I try to leave the curb rein as loose as possible. So really, even though the curb is in their mouth, you're really riding on the Bradoon, prefer it. Okay, so there's that. Uh, this is for my big guy, my big draft guy. This is a simple, as I already told you, a simple full cheek, but it's a six inch, all right? So here's gonna be helpful to you guys also, the standard horse, standard quarter horse, standard horse is gonna wear a five inch. That measures from here to here, five inches. Okay, when you order a bit, they're going to ask what size. Five inch is standard. Five and a quarter, five and a half. When you start getting into sort of the bigger mouth horses, six inches for my big half draft horse. All right. Rarely will you need anything bigger than six inch. You get into the draft horse sizes. We don't need to. Um, six inch, if you've got a big mouth horse or a half draft, a six, six inch is gonna suit you, all right? And then you can get into the prettier brow bands. You can see this is Dom's, so you went in with the prettier brow band. This is also a Cavison. Um, this is another type of baby horse bit. Instead of going with the full cheek, 
you can go with the loose ring, all right? But don't forget that I'm really not using this bit much at all anymore because I'm so hooked on the full cheeks. Because you can see that if you pull, if you have to pull hard enough laterally to the side, these rings will slip into their mouths. Whereas with this, you have no worries about that. Plus it gives you much more stability. It really stabilizes the bit in the horse's mouth. I love them. Okay, double bridle, uh, baby horse dressage, but this is a dressage bridle. Uh, these are very, this is a very traditional dressage bridle. This dressage bridle is also a cob. It also came from Dover. We love it. It's the equivalent of the hunter bridle. All right. It's made by Dover. I think they're called a Suffolk. Suffolk. Um, it's going to be somewhere around $80. This is the hunter one we have on pony. It comes with the braided reins, hunter reins. Fabulous bridle. We love it. This is the equivalent in a dressage bridle. Dressage bridles are usually black. Dressage tack is usually black. Hunter tack is usually brown. Jumper tack is usually brown. Western tack, working Western tack is usually brown. All right. The dressage tack is usually black padded. So we have the padded brow band, the padded cavison. This is actually a flash nose band. So you see this little deal here. This is called a flash nose band and it has a strap that goes around below as well and helps to hold the horse's mouth closed. I rarely will use what I call the bottom part of the flash. I usually just pull it off. Um, if you know you're never going to use it again, you can always cut off on one of these. There it is. I cut it off. <laughs> so if you know you're never going to use the bottom part of the flash, you can cut that little guy off. You can cut this little ring off. It's totally fine. Or you can leave it on there and that's totally fine as well. And if you ever need help keeping the horse's mouth closed, you can always use the bottom part of the flash. I try not to. Um, we talked about this with Dom in the Dom video that um, in the olden days, not in the olden days, but a bit ago, there was a fad where everybody was trying to crank the horse's mouth closed. And that's out of favor now, I think, I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, and so we're really not using the bottom part of the flash as much, but the bottom part of the flash is standard dressage equipment. So if you see a horse going around in a German training snaffle and the bottom part of the flash is on there, it's totally okay. It's very traditionally dressage. If you go to a dressage show, you're gonna see that. Absolutely positively. Um, we already ran through the parts. Um, so crown piece, brow band, capacit slash nose band, cheek pieces, and curl latch. Super easy. Now this is a dressage bridle, so it comes with my favorite dressage reins. All right, this, these are canvas, and I love them. I love that they're stoppers, so you know if your reins are even, because you know you, on both reins, you're on the second keeper, you're on the second stopper. So I much prefer these to the braided reins. I much, much, much prefer the dressage reins. Now you can get these, these ones are canvas, these are canvas leather. You can get them in leather, okay? So these are also dressage reins, all right? So you see how these are leather with the little keepers. These are canvas with the little keepers. You can also get ones that are rubber, uh, mostly for cross country, for when you know your horse is gonna get wet. <laughs> they have uh, rubber ones. So um, I don't use the rubber ones because I'm not riding cross country. But you can see for Dom's bridle, she has the leather ones. It's up to you. Do you prefer to carry the canvas or do you prefer to carry the leather? I like the canvas because it's stickier. You can really lock into it better. Uh, English bridle, dressage bridle, advanced dressage horse bridle, FEI dressage horse bridle that you need to show in the double western. All right, here we go. The Western bridles. You can get a lot of different types of Western bridles. I like this one. All right, this is my this is my go-to for a Western bridle. All right, um, I have the baby horse full cheek on it. 
I start a lot of horses in this bridle. Uh, you can pick and choose what you want it to look like. I like the Western bridles that have the little doodads on the forehead. I think it looks pretty. I really like it. So, and usually they have a little tip of silver. I love that. I love the conchos. You can go with whatever concho you want. I bought these conchos separately and put them on this bridle. Um, I really recommend you go with buckles. These days, people are going with Chicago screws. Okay, I get it, but sometimes they unscrew and you end up with your bridle falling apart. Also, when you put your bridle together, you have to have a screwdriver. And anytime you adjust it, you have to have a screwdriver. You can't just adjust it. So kind of a pain in the Watusi. Then the newest thing that they're coming up with, that they've come up with, are just thin little leather pieces. And you just tie a knot. That makes me really nervous. What if the knot comes out? Or what if I want to take the knot out? Is it then stuck closed because it's leather? I like buckles. Buckles are great. Buckles are fabulous. They're easy. They're great looking. It's really easy to adjust the bridle. It's really easy to change the bit over. Um, I love buckles. You kind of have to search a little bit for a Western bridle that has buckles. But they're out there. I promise. I promise they're out there. Brown. Um, you can go with as much bling as you like. I don't like this, the look of the split ear. Um, I like this type of bridle for a horse if you like the look of the split ear fine um no nose band see what i mean very very rarely do you have a western bridle with a nose band i don't know that any of them come with nose bands i think that's considered a training device for the western people um so there is that and then i'm just going to run to the tap room and get one more thing to show you guys and then we're done with our bridal section Okay, so I just ran to my other tack room. So I forgot I had a pony bridle. So I'm gonna switch the pony over from this, which is a cob, and you can see I'm always at the very, very, very tippy tippy top. And I don't have any more holes to go up and it's still almost too big. So here's a standard bridle for a pony. Um, so I'm gonna switch them over into this pony bridle. I'll switch the full cheek over. This has the baby horse bit in it. Oh, it's a Bradoon, baby horse Bradoon. Okay, so you see how little the ring is compared to the standard ring. See how tiny? See how teeny tiny the ring is? And this looks really great on a pony. You don't kind of get overwhelmed by the ring size. So maybe I'll leave this on the pony. I'm not sure. I didn't really realize that this was my pony bit. Um, so pony bit on a pony bridle, that makes sense. Now let's just run through this bridle quickly. Um, Hunter. You see, it's a hunter bridle, right? It's pretty easy to see. It's brown. Uh, it's got the braided reins, correct? Uh, not quite as pretty as the Dover bridle. You don't have the stitching. Oh, you do, it's just old. There is stitching on there, guys. You just can't see it because the bridle's so old. And there's stitching here. Okay, so there was stitching on the nose band and the brow band, but you can't see it because the bridle's really old, all right? Uh, the last thing about this cute bridle, buckle, but down here you have these old-fashioned little hookities, and we always used to use these on our horses. We didn't have um, buckles. So these little doodads, all right, you sometimes see them often on the hunter bridles. Uh, here's a pony club tip. A lot of people struggle with opening these, all right? And so Anna's going to show you up close, showing my beautiful nails. The pony club tip to getting these out is to push down from here, okay? So if you push from here, it pops it out of the little slot. You don't have to fight with it. And it comes right off. These look like that, all right? And then you can just undo it. If you yank and yank and yank and yank at it, it can be really tricky. So there's a good pony club tip for you guys. Um, often the hunter bridles have these, although I much prefer the buckles. Up here they have buckles. Don't ask me why. And down here we have these. And on the reins, oh yeah, look what's on the reins. On the reins we have the doodads. Okay, I don't know what they call those. So to put this back on, oh my goodness, I don't even know where I was. Okay, so let's find it. So to go back on here, right? You go through. Now here's a really good tip. Put this through. The keeper. 
already. Then push it down, find the end, pop it in. A lot of times you'll end up fighting with these. And if you use that pony club, I call it a pony club tip because I learned it in pony club a million years ago. Uh, it's really helpful. Push down, it'll pop out. All right. And so with the reins, so you can see these reins didn't initially go with this bridle, right? But same game. If I pull and pull and pull, it can be really frustrating. But even with my obnoxious, even with my obnoxious, ridiculous long nails, you can still see my tip. If I push here, look, pops right out. You're not fighting with it. You know what I mean? Done deal. Then to put it back in, and like I said, these reins do not go with this bridle. See, the leather doesn't match. So you can see that that trick works across the board. And then push it through here, already put it in that. All right, then slip it down, pop it in. It'll help you guys so much, and it's a great tip to not fighting with these little doodads. All right, so there's the hunter bridle, but the main reason, so I'm gonna put this, uh, I'm gonna put this over the pony bridle because I wanna remember to put the pony bridle on the pony because it's gonna fit him so much better. See how much smaller it is? Rather than the cob. All right, so I'm gonna switch that over. What I wanted you guys to see was, you don't need that, this one. This is really awesome. So you can buy these from the Western tax stores. Uh, you can buy these from the Western tax stores and they're fabulous. Look at, just snap right on. They're so awesome. So uh, I consider this a Western piece of tack. So if you're going to be using the same bridle on a bunch of different horses or you're trying out bits for the same horse or whatever it is, it's so great. They've got a snap. You just snap the bit on and it's done. And then the throat latch is really marvelous as well. It just attaches with a little snap. So in my opinion, these are worth their weight in gold because they're so easy. Clearly, I don't have the reins on it, but they're just so darn easy. Um, I love these. So I just wanted to show you guys this last piece of equipment that just makes life so much easier. And I would consider this a Western bridal. Okay, and I think that wraps up my lecture about bridles and bits. I think we covered it really, really well. I'm going to consider that a wrap. See you guys next time.